like you to take this pose. I taught this pose before on a speech that I did. It's called the Superman or Wonder Woman pose. It will change your endocrine system to allow testosterone to rise and the cortisol, which is a stress hormone, to lower. It will allow you to take a stressful situation and act on it with ease, or at least greater ease than what you might have had before. I recommend that you do it a couple of minutes. Guys, if you want to ask somebody on a date, including your wife, do this ahead. If you want to ask someone for a favor, do this ahead. If you want to ask people as a call to action, do this ahead because it's going to change. Can you feel it in your body? It should be about now changing your endocrine system, ready for action and lowering the stress that you might normally feel in front of a group acting like Superman. <laughs> Go ahead and sit down and you can keep doing this. It opens up the chest. If you sit like this, especially with the legs open, that is a power pose, this is a power pose. Both of those poses are natural. Even if people are blind and have never seen them before when they're happy and they feel they've won, they'll do that. Now I can launch into my talk about something that is, I didn't even think happened near us. My next door neighbors, are the pastors of a church in my town, and they go to Africa and South America to help victims of human trafficking. They go and teach trauma classes to the teachers of the school teachers of the churches wherever they can and help children to live through and work past their trauma. So I went to a talk. I was given an assignment by my newspaper that I write for to go take a picture of this human trafficking seminar and maybe a 150 word caption. I went thinking it was gonna be about Africa and South America and Asia. It was about El Paso County, particularly Colorado Springs and the I-25 corridor. I was appalled. I was so in shock, I almost began to shake in my seat. My poor service dog tried to calm me down and say, leave, leave, you're overreacting, we need to calm down. Of course I couldn't, I needed to listen to it. But what I want to tell you about today is that we have it, and that it is terrible, and that Colorado has one of the worst ratings in the United States. Five years ago, Colorado had an F rating. They did zero about human trafficking. This is slavery. This is human slavery from children ages one, through 17 and adults. Some adults are brought in under certain circumstances that they think they're going to be a nurse or have a job and they're immediately trafficked. This is why I had you do that exercise before because it's such a serious issue for all of us. When I heard about it I thought well those must be kids who are runaways. Those must be people who aren't connected to their families aren't connected to their lives, and that's not true. Some of them are A students, cheerleaders, and very active in their church and youth groups. Some of them are runaways, and some of them are kidnapped. How can this happen? How can anybody fall for such a thing? They groom these kids. They take a year or two to groom them. They find someone who's slightly on the outside, slightly down, or maybe they could engage with them and befriend them in certain cases. Other steps that they take are kidnapping and taking them to another state where they don't know and driving them, of course. That was something you might consider, but to have it right here in their backyard was shocking. Colorado has gone in the last five years from an F rating where they were doing nothing to a B rating, not because of laws and not because of legislation or our political leaders, but because of law enforcement and citizens like you. Law enforcement has made it their goal and their standby, not in my backyard, not here, not now, not ever. We can take steps, we're the ones, because our legislation is falling behind in that. We can take steps and of course talk about it, but there are things that we can do Nationwide, there's 100,000 at least children, if not 500,000, who 
are enslaved in the sex trade, in the drug trade, and other things. That it's against their will, and they continue to do it. One of the reasons they continue to do it is they are threatened. The ones who go, home, go to school, do the um, criminal activity, and come home and still keep good grades, those kids have been told and brainwashed that their families will be murdered. That their their life, that they'll be murdered, that their families will be murdered. There's all kinds of coercive, coercive methods that are used. I think we need to do something about this, and I think we need to think about it more. Colorado, in the last year, was able to get and rescue 100 children in one year. In the last five years, over 500 children have been rescued, but this is a fraction of the children. I know of only two rescue homes that can handle about 10 kids. We need more rescue homes. There are things that we can do to help develop and have rescue homes. When you consider that any kid, now this is any color, any age, and it has nothing to do with economics or economic background. Every kid is at risk. And you may wonder, well, wh what are these uh, pimps getting out of it? What's going on? It is a cheaper way to make a lot of money fast with no output. When they sell drugs, they're dependent on buying drugs, buying a product, selling a product, using that money to buy the product again. With slavery, there is no fee for your slave. They have to do it for free. They are forced to do it. There is big market, big profit, and no outlay. That is the incentive of those pimps. Again, it's right here in our backyard. What can we do about it? Does anybody want to do something about it without getting endangered themselves? That's why I gave you this, because it's scary. Hopefully, I've gotten you excited, but not scared. There are many things you can do. If you see, for example, they have truckers against trafficking. If you see something that doesn't look quite right, a kid that does, but looks maybe their eyes are glazed, or they're not able to communicate with you properly, that's a huge sign they're either on drugs or they've been dazed and confused, and they live in a world of dazed and confused. Call 911. You can always call 911 and say, I saw something suspicious. If you see a child with somebody that does not look like a parent or a caregiver, that's suspicious. It doesn't matter where you are. It could be in a Walmart parking lot. It could be them taking a kid to a hotel or a motel if you're driving by. You'll see that. Talk to others. Mention it. It's not something you want to talk about. It's not pretty conversation. <coughs> you will save a life by doing that. You will save a life and a future for a human being. I wrote here some things that you can do right now, today, and never stop. You can call 911. Everybody knows how to do that. You can call 1-844-CO4-KIDS. Everybody can do that. There's also an app on a phone that you can look for, and I'll give it to you after my talk. Capitol Hill is another place you can call. Here's the number. Last year, the Traffic Victims Protection Act expired. We want it back. Hmm. Children cannot be helped unless they are prosecuted, which creates criminals for something they did not want to do. We can make that disappear and help them without criminalizing them. As it stands, there's nothing that can be done for a child unless they're found and can get into a home. And there's only two in Colorado Springs that I know of. Is the one is in Peyton. I'm hoping that you'll do as I'm doing. I'm not rich. I'm having art shows all month in December. You're welcome to come to them. Anything you buy, I give a generous portion to Sarah's Home, sarahshome.us. I'd like to open it up now to questions. If anyone has a question, I hope you do, because this is huge. Anybody have a question?